I, I think I can start with this verse that your 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 fight is not against flesh and blood. Mm. It's the demon's power in the air. And mm. I think uh, let's open up with that because sometimes mm. we think we're fighting people, but yeah. we're not fighting people. It's actually a demon power behind it. Or you so, think you're fighting your spouse because your, yes. your spouse is just not yeah. doing what you want and it's not and working out and you're not connecting and you feel lonely. But it is ultimately, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, fight that, is really not about your spouse. It's about what's it's happening a, outside. Yeah. And our topic tonight, can we open up the topic? Is yes, the topic uh, is... Outside influences. influences. Yeah, we got it right tonight. <laughs> we sit so nicely together. It's so together. Again, it sounds good when we say one, two, three. It's outside outside influences. influences. Well, it's the two of us. Now, yeah. if you want to follow us, hashtag the two of us. Yes. You can always follow us on our own private Facebook pages and um, also see who we are. We don't mind that. Yeah. But tonight, shall we, we, it's quite a hefty topic because yeah. I yeah. think sometimes people think when we talk about Outside influences, then we're talking it's my mother in law. Yeah, I shall. Yeah. Is it mother in law? Is it the devil or is it the mother in law? You know, which one is it father in law <laughs> or, or is it sister in law <laughs> or is it my friends? Yeah, you see, the problem is we we always um categorize certain things, you know, and this is I'm also a mother in law, incidentally, and um, it's a tough thing to be a mother in law. Because remember, you're married to my child. Whether it's my son or my daughter, you are, not you, but they're the ones out there. It doesn't matter. You're married to my child. And um, so I will always feel that I've got the right as a mother yes. to, to have an input in yeah. what is happening. Because ultimately, I brought the child up. Remember, yeah. I slept with the child when they had fever. I was there when they had to study. I was there to take them to their first yeah. um, outings, buying their clothes, doing all these things. So obviously, I feel it is my right as a mother. But let's talk about that, Yeah, child. and also, you know, um, I, I, as we're talking about our own experience because we had, we got two daughters, and the eldest daughter, when they got married, they st stayed in, in a flat that, or quite a big flat at our yard, but it's separate. You know, garden that, cottage. Yeah. Oh, garden cottage, but... Um, yeah, uh, and and it was difficult for I could understand. I I, I it was easy for me, but my aunt really took it was difficult for her not to influence. Not know, to and interfere. we talk about the influence in your marriage, so we talk about the influence in the. And um, I had a few times that I said to my aunt, "Listen, leave it, leave it. They married a couple now, but it's hard for my aunt. So, you know, and and what did my daughter say, Mummy? Leave it." We are married. We know what we're doing, mm. you know. And and I think that is where the the influence. We're talking about their marriage now. They she immediately make a, a point of, of that, not that a mother influence mm. in, can become a, an influ, a influence in the in their marriage. So that's one of one uh, good example of outside influence. Let's mm. talk about in laws. You know mm. that that is so because. You outside remember your influence. little daughter, uh, your daughter and your little boy never grow. It's always your mommy's little boy mm. and daddy's little girl. And so. there's also the connection that we must yeah. remember between um, a parent and a child. It mm. will never change. It depends on how <laughs> the relationship is. Yes. But where um, there is a good relationship, it's often not that easy to let go. I remember when we were married, yeah. my mother-in-law one day said, um, um, we were married for a number of years already, and my mother-in-law said, um, no, Shaw won't like that kind of food. I, and I can't recall what I made. And she said, no, Shaw won't like that kind of food. And I still said, but, you know, I'm now married. He has to like that kind of food. He's got no choice. But then it stayed like that. Um, and she, she decided that this is how he was, and he's going to be like that. But remember, when your children are married or when you are married, you actually start creating yeah. your own style of living. Yeah. Things are different. And this, uh, yeah. Uh, um, let's, okay, that's, that's, that was now our influence. Uh, my mother as a dearly... I love my lovely mother. Woman. She's a lovely woman. Lovely woman of she God. loved God. Everything. She was not no intentional, and and she in her mind I was still a little boy, and I'm not. A, a, my firstborn was about eight years already, so I'm still a little boy. Mm. And she influenced, and and she was actually talked like almost like like don't, you were still the baby. That's my my mm. boy. It's my boy that you know, and so um, and she gave Mariana a little bit of a hard time. 
and then um, and then Mariano was very upset about the, the situation. So I said we actually went on just a hol small holiday, two week visit uh, on holiday December, my mother's place and uh, my mother's house. And um, so I said, okay, then we pack us. And she said, but why are you packing? Where are you going? I said, no, no. If my wife is not a, a, if my wife is not welcome here, then I'm not welcome. So I'm packing, and she immediately, you know, repent, say sorry, I didn't, so didn't realize. realize. And then you know what? Um, if it was not for me standing my man, you know, let's see, oh my mother, oh shame my mother, your mother is there outside. This is the this is the generation. Uh, this is my generation that mm. I stand up for, mm. and <clears throat> and then I had to to stand up for my wife and. Um, and then after that, you know, Mariana, my mother, was the biggest of friends. In, in actual fact, many times Mariana will complain with my mother and she will phone me, I, I hear you handling Mariana. He was like putting me in my place. So, so they were actually becoming big friends mm. and not enemies. So the influence is now changed. <laughs> the influence but it, is But it is now. a true problem when parents interfere in children's marriages. Yeah. But now, let's think about it, Sean. Yeah. What is interference? Because your mother just said something. It wasn't interfering. She wasn't um, basically coming to say how we must make our house or do mm. our decorations or mm. uh, put the curtains up or anything. She didn't. Yeah. Neither does my mother. So what is the kind of interference we're talking about here? It is not what we think it is. So mm. let's quickly look at the different kinds of outside influences in marriages and you will find it as we go along that some of them you will recognize let's look at three there are the external outside pressure interferences yeah. and that's not your mother it's mm. not your mother-in-law it's nobody mm. look at this those things that interfere in how your life must be run how the two of you must get along. So those interference are the number one one. The top one is expectations. You know what we do? And many people will do it. We are great campers, Charles and I. We are absolutely, we wish we, we could camp a lot more. So every time we go camping, we see uh, the Joneses and uh, the equipment and um, how they do camping. And so suddenly it becomes something that becomes an important thing to us. Now you can learn from that. Or it becomes an expectation that interferes in how your affairs are being run, which is dangerous. The second one is the one that I'm really talking about, the influences. Now remember, those influences that we are talking about are the ones that's actually causing stress in your life. If we just think of it, now I'm just going to call out a few because I'm trying to see here and that's why I have to put my glasses back on. What is the influence that will bring stress in your marriage, that will bring a separation even in your marriage? Like Henny was saying earlier on, you could be married and still feel like you are the loneliest person on the planet. These are the things that we have to watch out for and so I think every one of us must look towards that. So the number one would be your work. Did you know that your work is an outside influence in how your marriage is being run? I'm just thinking about us, or I think about Shaw and some years ago, how, um, how the party scene, because you have to do this to have business, you have to do that to have business. And it became almost like a lifestyle What that wasn't our lifestyle, but it became the outside influence lifestyle. And we didn't know how to balance that. We had to work on that because it's a different, it's almost like a different life. And all of us, our work is like it's got a life of its own. It's difficult to keep your work in one place and, and your, your, your married life in one place and even to keep your family life and your, your um, parents and them in one place. So this is one thing that we must remember. Second one, Shaw, the outside influence is finances. No. Because we will never have enough. We will never have enough. You think you've got enough and you work towards enough. You even save. You make plans and, and it's somehow the pressure is so much. And then you see, I, I'm always astounded. Um, we once, when we were just married, we had a, a big friends and um, 
Man, they um, they were just amazing. They went on holidays. They bought houses. They did things that we could never do because, you know what, we didn't know how to work with money. And so we were quite jealous of these people because I'm just trying to find where I was in my, in my follow my notes. Um, these people were quite... Like we were jealous of them and the way they operated in their money suddenly became mm -hmm. an influence in our lives because we wanted to keep up with the Joneses but they had a gift in how to operate with their finances and we didn't so it, instead of learning from them we messed up and we continued to mess up because that influence was a very unhealthy influence the other one Charlotte interferes in our marriages is trust you, who do we trust? Do you trust your pastor? Charles and I made many financial mistakes simply because we didn't know who to who trust. We, we, we didn't even go to anybody and speak to that person or ask them to help us. So we struggled with that. That's an influence that comes into your marriage. You see, the Bible talks about it's the little foxes that eats the vineyard at the bottom. They're the dangerous ones. We somehow worry about the big ones that we can see. And then the career demands, and then here comes another one, the cultural differences. I laugh at that. Because if a black person and a white person gets married, whether you like it or not, if they do get married, that is a huge cultural difference. But is it really? Because if a white person, which is English, get married to an English person, to an Afrikaans person, it's also a cultural difference. And that was Charles and myself. He rich comes from rich and poor. It's also a cultural difference. Charles comes from the farm in Hermanus, and I come from Pretoria. And we, we're totally different. The way he spoke, the, the way he acted, and I was from a different upbringing. So there is no such a thing, but those things are outside influences. Because the moment we move into stress, the moment we move into a, a, a tiredness, when we're tired, when you are feeling that your, your energy level is low, when you are feeling that you're not coping, that is when those things will attack you and will cause you to dis, 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 dismantle yourself, almost like disconnect yourself. So shall but when we talk about family and friends, those influences they are the ones on the end, they are the ones on the inside mm -hmm. because I was just speaking about the exterior influences. Now we're talking about the inside influences. Yeah. Look, the, the I, I think Marianne mentioned uh, quite a lot of things that is, but I think your your, your influences like we were already discussed uh, the in laws and the, the parents, but then also what about your pastor? Your pastor can be a big influence in your life, either positive or negative. Um, now, you know, if if your pastor, if your husband, for example, um, is unsafe and you do everything for your pastor for, if, and, and you neglect your husband, then it's actually an influence. Your pastor uh, uh, uses... I know a lot of pastors, that when somebody's doing all, everything and, and is not willing to help with everything, that wife is going to church all the time and this husband sit at home and be um, feeling like, oh, I'm not important. My, my, my pastor is more important. And there's nothing wrong with it, but it's definitely wrong. That pastor is an influence in your marriage. Mm. You know, because He's un, I mean, he doesn't mean it. He, I mean, he's he not, mean not, it. It was not the intention to... He's to, just to, a to, pastor. He's just like a normal. When mm. somebody is doing something, a pastor, you know, he, <laughs> they, they take advantage of it, of mm. course. It, and, and, but, but that's uh, the influence unknowingly. And then your husband sitting at home, or vice versa. can be the yeah, other way around yeah. as well. Very much so. Um, so well, your church is, life, you know, yeah. we have a, a lovely young lady in our church and um, her husband is not, he's not unsaved, he's just not connected to church life, mm. he doesn't like church life. And uh, she's involved in absolutely everything in the church. And then I just said to her one night, you can't do that anymore because there has to be a balance. And this is what we're going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, how do I get to the balance? How do I get to the place where I do not allow influences in my life? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, th there's a saying that your, that your relationship revolves around, around people and things and, um, and, and not on each other. I think that is where the, the difference is, because mm. all resolves around other people and things. Mm. And, and that's the other things and people become more important than your partner. And mm. I think 
and we can talk about that a lot because we experience that in our 47 years of marriage in the first years of our marriage we experience all those things so that is important that you you know that that you keep focus on each other what's more important mm. my spouse or the person and or in the our thing. case mm -hmm. and in our case we've got grandchildren and often our grandchildren will place demands on what they want and how they want it and we neglect ourselves in the sense that we would do more for our grandchildren. Now we love them dearly and there's nothing wrong with it and we want to bless our grandchildren. But somehow, in the mix of this whole scheme, before anyone was there, we were first. That's why our, our message is called The Two of Us. Right? Yeah, yeah, because mm. we were there first. <laughs> we were <laughs> the there first. Yeah. So I think with our children as well, mm. you know, we, we are always, uh, I mean, talk about sometimes children is so involved in in taking that relationship away from you know, the parents from the parents and suddenly uh, the emptiness start creeping in you know the loneliness and the emptiness as we said earlier on is lonely mm. you know because the children is more important than anything else mm. than your spouse and we get it sometimes my the wife is so worried about the children everything is around the children and the husband sitting there and i think okay i'm also here <laughs> yeah but but you know that 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 thing we stopped years ago in a, yeah. um, in our married lives that the children come second, we were there first. We are the number one. They are second, and then and we make it sure we we tell them we, we were there the first. Head. Yeah, we were third. You came second. <laughs> yeah, and so we will keep it. That so way. it helped us a lot when they left. The, the day the last one left the house, there was no emptiness or anything. We never felt then we only start. En then we only start enjoying our life. <laughs> you know, there was. It's so nice. It become yeah. But where shall I just saw you? Somebody's greeting us all the way from Bulgaria. Yeah. How cool is that, Destiny? Yeah. All the way from Bulgaria. Welcome on the chat. My yeah. goodness, yeah, that's so nice. Bulgaria yeah. is quite a distance from us. Yeah. So we're talking about this tonight, which is so, and I think everybody's excited to have <laughs> Destiny on the group from Bulgaria. So, Sean, when we talk about outside influences, we have now seen there are so many different ones. Yeah. But you know what I also thought of, Sean? Another influence is this thing that you have a different hobby that um, keeps your life totally away from your spouse. Like, say for argument's sake, you're a mechanic and you're forever working on cars in the garage and your, your wife sits at home and she has to watch TV or whatever and every now and again she, you get a cup of coffee but you don't have a chat. Um, that is also an influence. So you know what the thing that you and I um, realized? many years ago that we are married to each other and we are each other's first priority that doesn't mean that I control your life yeah. or you control my life in fact it doesn't mean it at all it means that we give each other space to grow in the directions we need to grow but because we do that we felt that we honor our marriage even more so we make special times to be with each other because we have to make sure that nothing comes between us. It is a dangerous thing, people. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be anything that can take the priority instead of your spouse. Now, if you are a controlling spouse, we have spoken about that before, where you want to control everything that your spouse is doing. That's a mistake. That's an outside influence. <laughs> that is another outside influence because it's very, very, it's actually yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Because we cannot control anybody. God is the one that decides over us. Yeah. But we can work together. I think it's so, so many things, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking roughly about, you know, I'm, I'm, we're talking about the marriages and everything. Um, you know, the, the Bible said the man shall, well, we always want to, man shall leave his mother and father and to his wife. Say that because to the wife. God <laughs> is so important for God that the man must start his own generation. Mm. And I think God wants to perfect perfect generation because family are so important. You know, mm. They mustn't be influenced mm. from outside. Family must God is for family. <laughs> that is what we are there for. We mm. we're standing for family. Family must grow together. When families stand together, nothing, no outside influence can can um, it can in, in, um, inter interfere, yeah. interfere or enter mm. into the into that into that um, in that circle. So mm. the circle, the your generation, 
husband and wife, your generation, is put, must be protected. The father-in-law, the mother-in-law, the friends, the pastor, the everything, mm. they're an outside circle. Mm. They're not they don't belong inside. They they there. They can come in and go out. You know, mm. That's it. They, they mm. don't belong in that inner circle, and that is so important. Mm. I'm speaking to men this evening. You left your mother and father. God said you must cleave to your wife. That is a, a instruction from God mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that you have to cleave to your wife, and and that is your, you become your, own and your wife is waiting for you. <laughs> She's waiting, waiting for you to be the leader. Mm. Uh, you know, my, I know my, we we talk about experience now. Mm. I was not a leader in my in our beginning years. And because what happens, Joel, when you don't lead, then I start leading. Yeah. Oh, and, she, and can she lead? And can she take <laughs> over? Mensa? <laughs> Mensa. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, the reason why a woman starts leading is because there's an absent leader. Yeah. Because God created the man to be the leader of the house. Yes. And if he leads with abuse, if he leads, leads with aggression, or he's, he's um, controlling, or whatever. Nobody's happy in that that shape of whatever's happening. But the moment that happens, a wife steps up to the, the plate, and mm -hmm. she starts leading. And then she's out of God's will. No, because that's not God's plan mm -hmm. for her. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's, that's also an outside influence, because although we married, Marianne tried to lead, and she know, and that allowed, give me a chance to lead as well. What did you, you must actually explain that, you know, because so it's so I, important. What I did is I realized um, that um, me leading caused more harm. I realized it because the, the, the more I led, the more I made decisions, the more passive Shaw became. The more I said to him, but you're not saying anything because he's got nothing to say. I said it all. Hmm. And then, actually, I read a book, um, Fascinating Womanhood. That really helped me. Because remember, I, I come from a generation where there was no leadership in that area. There was no leadership for marriages. So there was nobody guiding us and, and helping us to make the right decisions. So, but God helped us. I mean, I must be so, I'm so thankful to the Lord. Because when I read <coughs> that book, it actually opened my eyes to how I can allow my husband to lead. So what did I start doing? When the children would come to me and they would ask me to make a decision, which I normally did because I always made decisions, then I would say to them, go ask your father. They were shocked. They couldn't believe that I would even do a thing like that. When we want to go somewhere, I ask the people, please ask my husband, he will make the decision. Because it's always better for the man to make a decision, not in all cases, but in this yeah. case. It was important that I allow Shaw to make the decisions. And, uh, it was and, important. And, and also if Charlene or Heather come to me and said, uh, Mommy said I must ask you if I can go out to a certain party, then I know. <laughs> it's actually no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but, no, no, Maria, understand. Because uh, you, you you could send, you, you had the, the you, you, you never say no, you can't go. Because, but yeah. if you send me to... Send them to me. I, I know. Okay, they are. Then you have why to think. sending me? Yeah. <laughs> I would, then I, I, then I, I put the I responsibility know. with my husband. Yeah. Then also, what I started doing, Charles, is when you said you wanted to um, do something financially, then I would say, I trust you because I know you have our best interest at heart. Hmm. I didn't trust him. I didn't. We've messed up financially, both of us. There was no reason to trust Charles. But when I said it, I started releasing that leadership of trust in his life it changed everything. Yeah. The other thing is when I said, your father makes the final decisions. This is my children eventually started saying, my mother has a lot to say, but my father has the final say. And I think it changed everything in our home. So that when my husband had to make the final say, and if I disagreed with him, then I would behind their back say, that was a nice, oh, I disagree. That's not how I see it. Then we can sort it out between us. But it didn't come overnight. So you have to help that your sp spouse, excuse me, goes back into it's leadership. Sure. It's all, all, there's all influences. This is, mm. you know, all part of influence. I think, uh, yeah, just to finalize this uh, situation of giving me the lead in the house. You know what she did? She leaves the municipality account for me. She leaves everything for me. Everything. I mean, if the municipalities come cut my lights and water, 
Not my problem. Say, this is my problem, your problem. And um, every, everything else, the car break, car need to be washed, bond, everything. Let, the rubbish. Yeah, geezer burst, whatever. Everything is on me. You know? mm. But you know what? It makes me feel, feel so good. Feel like a real man. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know what? There's one thing that I can't stand if men sitting there and they get served by their wife. Yeah, no, no. Wait, that's not Wait just a me. minute. <laughs> but, this, but the thing is here We mustn't allow those things We have to create our own life yeah. We have to create how we are So Charles, I want to say How do I get the balance In my marriage Where I can say We, we can have people come to visit But there's no more influence And there's a lot of influence also Remember television It's a big influence um, how we are, what we do, where internet we go, shopping, those internet shopping, all those things. <laughs> oh, there's so many outside yeah. influences. And the truth is we can allow these things. But Charles and I, we so often have to work hard on, because it's easy to fall into a pattern of just doing certain things. And um, But it, you know what? We always say you are intentional. Yeah. You have to be intentional yeah. about your marriage. Because you have to be intentional. I think about. there's two words, God and protect. I think mm. those two words are so important because mm. but remember God and protect come with a price. Mm. It, it just it just don't help it happen overnight. Mm. You have to be all the time. You know, as my aunt said, hey, <laughs> fake it. <laughs> fake it until you make <laughs> until it. You until have you to make do it. it. Now here's the one thing we have learned is we are not in competition with anybody. Mm. In our home we've learned we are not in competition. We're not in competition mm. with your finances. We're not in competition with your lifestyle. We're not in competition with your vehicles. We're not in competition with your jobs. We're not in competition with who you are, who you ra how you raise your children, nothing. We're not. Mm. We taught our children that from young. You're not in competition. You're your own unique family. Mm. I think if we get that standard right, it would be yes. a number one one winner, winner. Yeah. because not to be in competition changes everything because you never feel the pressure that you have to be like your own, your other friends now we've had multi multi millionaires as our friends we've even traveled with them just recently we went with um, two of our friends and, mm. and they are very 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 wealthy and the problem is it's easy when they are much more they've got lots more money than you to say to allow them to pay for everything to do. So we didn't allow it. Yeah. We didn't. We stayed by ourselves. We didn't allow them because we are own people. We cook the way we cook. And if you don't like the way we cook, it's not my business. Yeah. You don't have to eat my food. Go eat your own food. You understand? We don't have to be in competition with anybody. And that includes your family. Mm. That includes your neighbors. That includes everybody. That's the number one thing. Mm. Try. Yeah, I, see, yeah. I see Susan Luther say, I'm enjoying the topic. I make some changes. There you go. We are <laughs> Praise going to. God. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> so number one is do not be in competition. Yeah. That will allow you to be free. So mm. when your parents come, remember this. I've learned this. I actually had to learn it all right. But I know my mother-in-law used to cook a whole day. Actually, in fact, the Sunday lunch started already Saturday morning. Mm. Then you would think by Sunday lunch, when you eat, it's this buffet, big meal. And it's not an ordinary meal. It's the way she cooks. My mother-in-law, the way she cooks. My mother, again, on the other hand, would rise early on a Sunday. And we would have a buffet lunch on Sunday because they're two different people. But both of them had influence in the way how we cook. But in the end, we cook the way we want to cook because we had to quickly decide we are us. So that's why it's the two of you, just together. The other one is change how you communicate. I think that it's so dangerous always that when you are with your parents or when you are with anybody to give those nasty remarks, you know, about yes. your spouse mm. because you feel almost better. If they are there and, and um, you don't have enough money or you, don't, or you can't go on holiday or both of you are not doing what you want to do, whatever, and you go with the family and you say, yes, but my husband will never achieve to that. Well, that is a no-no. It's a big no-no. Don't ever do that. Don't ever speak like that about your spouse. Don't mm -hmm. ever, I don't care what they do, you don't speak like them like that because the moment you do that, you open up the door for those people to start influencing how you feel. I remember I've got a niece and I didn't like 
how their front door was looking because um, I felt, you know, it was damp and everything. And I said, listen, your husband needs to fix the front door. It's pathetic. And then she said to me straight out, she says, he will when he has the time. And I appreciated that because the truth is I wanted to influence how she is towards her husband, but she didn't allow me. Mm. You have to stand like an, uh, a sergeant major to protect the two of you so strongly. And then the other one is to compromise. When we compromise people, oh my goodness, I hear this all the time. I hear this thing that it's so easy to compromise. Like, say for arguments, like, let's go to diet. Now, Charles, you want mm. to lose your belly a little bit. Before. <laughs> no, that's, a belly. So, <laughs> that's, another, that's another influence. <laughs> <laughs> so Shaw so wants to, but he says to me, so don't buy those nice things in the house. But I want some nice things. He says, don't buy it. Because when you buy it, I am going to compromise my yesterday's decision. But you know what? The same with influence coming from outside. Yes. Mm. Just do not allow compromising. Mm. So what? If so, people come so, with... Okay, next time you bring it, I'm going to throw it in the dustbin. No, don't. Yeah. It's my <laughs> things. <laughs> so, so here's one of the things that's very important when people come into your house it's the two I always say this is my space yes. if you don't like my space you don't have to come into my space if you come with alcohol into my house you're not welcome you're definitely not going to put it in my fridge not that and you will not come into my house that kind of influence doesn't belong in my home if you want to do it in your house please there's no judgment here please don't, don't think mm. I'm doing that but it's the values that we have. So we don't compromise the same way. I will not compromise any other thing that's against our values because it creates, it, it comes against who we are. The third one is, Sean, is commitment. I think something about commitment is so big because Jesus Christ committed to us so strongly and we want to be committed to the world and his sister, but we sort of, fail when it comes to commitment to our spouse. What am I talking about? I'm faithful to Shaw. Yeah. I, we have a lovely marriage. We are cooking food. I do this. At least I do a nice, I can make a nice meal. And all these things. I'm committed. But listen to commitment. Commitment is also in every other area. How easy is it to help other people all the time, but you're not committed to what's happening in your house? Mm. Um, you always hear a mechanic's car is never his car is always broken because he's committed to his friend's car and his brother's car and the cousin's car but he doesn't fix his own a builder their own house is often failing because he fixes everybody else's the same is the thing with your commitment to each other you have to trust each other and you have to respect the values that you have. In other words, always nice with other people, but not <laughs> nice with your spouse. Yeah. You know, that is actually the, uh, we find it quite a lot, you know, that that people are uh, nice with their, with friends and people they work with and everybody. And they smile with them. Yeah, but the commitment to come home and be nice with his wife, that's a, I don't know. That is a difficult one. It's only grumpy that comes out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why is why is the lounge seat not standing? Why is this? Uh, yeah. That is that is influences from outside. You know, all the friends and as you so, uh, as you got so influenced because now you come home, then the influence of of the outside world is um, mm. it, it's creating chaos in the house. I like what uh, Irene also said. She feel exactly the same. Um, so you're gonna have to make some changes, and um, and there was uh, Jesus. I will. I wish I know this earlier. <laughs> Don't compromise your values. Okay? Don't that, compromise. That is that is so important. But then, then, you know, we in a marriage, we create our own set of values. We yeah. this is why it's the two of us. Yeah. We create how we live. And we create everything for us because it's about us. It's not about anybody. So people, so currently in our world, we, we hear so many things. There's so many fights. Who stands with who? Who says what? What? When must I shop? Why can't I shop there? All these things are everywhere. I think once the two of you agree on who you are, it will remove all those horrible things. So here's yeah. something <coughs> that I've read. Yeah. That I want to read. Where's this piece of paper? Did I put it somewhere else? Oh, here is at the bottom. All the notes are here. <laughs> yeah. 
Here's another one that's very important. How easily will we tell a lie to each other? And how easily will we help and be nice to other people? But And you see, we allow that to become more important. So when I'm nice to other people and I come home, then I find it very hard to be nice to my spouse. And I tell my spouse lies. Those things are outside influences. Yeah, it's those little jackals. So I want to read you the scripture that I feel. And so you can all write the scripture down. It's five. It's in the book of it's, it's John 15. Why, is it, why do I write five there? I don't think it's five. John 15 verse 12. It says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And I think one of the things here that's important is, the minute there's a fly here, the minute you compromise, the minute you come together, and you come in agreement with each other, you say, I'm going to follow Jesus. Now, this is the only influence that's more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. It is the Lord Jesus. Yeah. It is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There are times that we are all struggling and we need help. That is our best help. And I'm not saying go, don't go to anybody. I'm not saying that. We are definitely not saying it. We've helped many, many couples. But what we are saying is, if the two of us can just come together. Talk louder. Um, anyway, so what? What we say, what, I was uh, still saying, when yeah. the two of us come together, what do we do? We pray. We pray. And we take communion. Yeah. And then when we do that, yeah. things change. Yeah. And there comes peace in the situation. So, outside influences, it's, it's yeah. not a good thing. Yeah. But you have to settle what you allow in your house, who you allow, and how you allow it into yes. your circumstances. Yeah. I think what uh, the Bible said, I think we're going to round up with that, what God joined together, let no man separate. And I think this is a, such an important scripture that, that what God set, uh, uh, put together, that no, no, no man um, separated that. And uh, tonight, you are joined together with your spouse. You are joined together with your family. I mean, let no influence, no man, because man can be your biggest influence in our lives. You know, mm. uh, I, I just said that our battle is not flesh and blood, but man's influence can be the biggest, um, uh, make the biggest um, uh, things in your life that causing problems, causing disunity, causing separation from each other. Mm. That, you know. And that's what the Bible says, you must guard the unity. Yeah. It is so important to guard it. You yeah. must be so intentional about the two of, of us. You must be so intentional about the two of you. And you're the testimony that the, mm. Bible, the world is reading, mm. and we have to work at it, especially now coming into the season where we're celebrating the birth of Jesus mm. Christ. Mm. It's the time where people are looking at the church and saying, are you really celebrating Jesus or are you celebrating what's happening out there? Now, we know one thing. We know that Jesus Christ is alive and we're happy about that. Yes. So yeah. in this time, our testimony will be the strongest than ever. And you know what? We don't have to even fake it because we've been so intentional about yes. it that we are able yeah. to really enjoy each other. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to our yeah. holiday yeah. together. And here, I mean, I think, Marianne, it's, it's like it's, you have to do it all the time. Because year constant. after year, mm. we said to ourselves years ago, we're not going to get Christmas that same. Well, every time a year, people get the bores, they got this, and mm. got all problems and hassles. We always said we're going to have the best December. All the years, every December will be the better and better. So I think, put your mind on it, make a confession that this in December is going to be the best one between the two of us. We're going to intentionally, we're going to make it because what God joined together, no man can no, come I, inside, I, no I, influence from outside. And I just want to say to the people who do not have money to go away, anyway, Make something happen. Take the dogs for a walk. <laughs> Make a nada. Just a park down the road, and I know you sometimes think it's not safe. Well, gather, gather somebody else yeah. and let's have something. Just do something, especially for the two of you. Yes. I know in the years, we've made a decision when we got married, and we are married 47 years mm. this month. I can you believe it, this month, 47 <laughs> years. But ever, ever since we got married, we said we will save up 
to be on holiday every year. And our holiday has been so important for us and for our children. So I want to encourage you, if you can't go anywhere, don't spend money. Uh -huh. Save up for the next year. But if you can't save up, make the best of it. Uh -huh. make, it, make, it make it so special that you will never forget 2023, this uh -huh. Christmas holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's amazing. So, um, we're going to end up with the, the evening. Uh, it's always so nice to talk, and I like the comments. And, mm, and, uh, uh, always thank nice. You, Pastor Maral and Shao for leading us in the event. So, uh, thank you for listening to us. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, what God joined together. Let no man understand that. Mm -hmm. So, this is the uh, tonight. We wish you all the best for the new year. If yeah. we don't see you, talk to you again in this uh, December before Christmas. Let God join together. Let no man separate it. Please, people, put your mind on it. Let Make a difference. Make this year totally different. Mm. Don't let influence, any influence come inside because the influence is want to destroy you. No Only man, God no, no evil power <coughs> going to destroy your unity in Jesus' name. I, see, I do see there Jennifer and us, they are married for 51 years. Yes. Congratulations. I'm, I'm coming. We're coming. We're coming, <laughs> we're coming for you. <laughs> we're coming. God bless you. Yeah. And God bless everybody else. And, yeah. and I know that this season is going to be a good season. Yes, yeah. Allow Jesus mm. to be your Lord. And um, whatever anybody mm. else has to say, yeah. you, you have nothing to prove to them, only to each other. Yeah. It is the two of you yeah. against the world, yes. not the Amen. two of you against each other. Yeah. God bless you. Thank Thank you, Lydia and, uh, and Irene. Thank you for, uh, yeah, you say thank you. And we really appreciate the thank yous. And let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Yeah. God arise inside of you. Father, I thank you tonight. Lord, mm. I bless, we bless the families on, mm. on this group tonight, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray that Lord, your spirit will be upon them in this time of a holiday. Lord, I pray that your protection will, will, will surround them, Lord Jesus, that your peace will Cover them up, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for the children, for family, Lord Jesus, for protection, but especially for the for the married couples and, and, and mothers and fathers, Lord Jesus, that the, Lord, that it will bring them together in this time. In Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bye-bye. From the two of us bye -bye. to you, <laughs> God bless you.